Thanks, Jill. And uh, I hope everybody out there has their eyes open until after you end up hearing what our panelists have to say. And I have two really interesting panelists. Um, immediately to my right is Ariel Garten, who is CEO of Interaxon, but the CEO actually is Chief Evangelist Officer. And I'm sure there's a story there that we'll get her to tell us. And um, next to her is Shelly Ibach, who's the president and CEO of Select Comfort Corporation. And for those who, of you who aren't familiar with that as a name, just think sleep number bed. So um, this is really interesting because it isn't often that you end up having um, kind of pure consumer products in a health conference. Mm -hmm but you guys are gonna tell us why it's so important that we understand what both of your companies are up to and a lot of other companies that are consumer products who have an intersection between health, and, uh, between uh, cons what a consumer product is and what a health product is. And I don't know how many people, I can't really see you guys because of the lights, but uh, I don't know how many people saw the panel yesterday where the authors of Super Gene uh, we're talking about the impact of epigenetics on how genes are expressed. And both of them talked about the uh, important role of both um, uh, sleep, but also relieving stress. And so we're gonna really play off of what we heard yesterday here on the panel today. So, um, you know, Ariel, I think I'll start with you. Um, your product is Muse, mm -hmm. and I had a chance to try it out uh, this week, which was fantastic. So I'm hoping you can tell us a little bit about what you're up to, a little bit about your background as a neuroscientist, and um, why, why, what we should, what we need to know about Muse and how it works. Sure, thanks, Pat. Very honored to be here. So this is Muse, the brain sensing headband. It is a clinical grade EEG, four sensors, two frontal, two temporal, two on the forehead, two behind the ears, slips on just like a pair of glasses and gives you clinical grade system the same as a biosemi would, but on your smartphone or tablet in a slim little form factor. There are a wide variety of applications for it, but the one that's really in market now is as a meditation tool. So meditation, is starting to become very well accepted in healthcare. There's now over a thousand published studies talking about the benefits of meditation to decrease your stress, your anxiety, improve your cognitive function, decrease your pain, improve your cancer care process, et cetera, et cetera. But there are very few good ways to implement it in a healthcare setting. So if I go to a doctor with hypertension, the doctor knows that he's supposed to recommend diet and relaxation and meditation, but you have no idea how to implement that. So Muse makes that implementation easy by teaching you how to meditate in a slim little digital form factor. So you hand somebody a muse, they take it home, they learn how to meditate, you track your meditation data over time, and you come back to your doctor. So we have over 120 different research institutions that are using muse in a wide variety of ways, and it's also a consumer product available for tens of thousands of consumers. Fantastic, so I'm, I'm gonna just drill down on that sure. a little bit. So um, it's measuring, your, it's, it's basically doing a mini uh, EEG, is that correct? correct? And how exactly um, do consumers take that information and translate that into being able to meditate more effectively? Sure. So we make meditation easy by letting you actually hear the sound of your own mind while you meditate. So you slip on the headband, it tracks your EEG, and then creates an algorithm um, that lets you know when you're in a state of focused attention and when your mind is wandering. So meditation is not just letting your mind go blank. Uh, you sit home, you go home, you try to let your mind go blank and it never works and it's frustrating. So what Muse teaches you do is it teaches you what focused attention meditation is. It teaches you when your mind is wandering and when you're focused. So you get real time feedback on your brain's activity. And then you get real data that you can see your improvement and track your progress time after time. So it takes the guesswork and mystery out of meditation and makes it something that's tangible, actionable, data oriented and something that can really exist in a clinical setting. Okay, and I'm gonna ask you one more question of before course. we move on to sleep, and that is, it sounds great, and by the way, I ask everybody that I interview this, mm -hmm. it sounds great, but how do you know uh, that it really works? How do you tell consumers, hey, you ought to get this product because I know that it really works? So we just finished a study with Baycrest Hospital and University of Toronto. They looked at uh, average individuals musing for 10 minutes a day over six weeks, and they saw a decrease in somatic symptoms, headache, pain, nausea, 
an increase in cognitive function, including a divided attention task, uh, improvement on stroop task of 50 milliseconds. So making fast decisions in a stressful scenario, you do much faster. And then of the 120 research institutions, Mayo Clinic is running a study for breast cancer patients, demonstrating that using these decreases the stress of breast cancer surgery. And I think the second phase will prove that it improves recovery times. Uh, Harvard uses it for traumatic brain injury and on and on. Oh, okay, so with all this, all these studies that you're doing, uh, it's interesting that you have positioned it as a consumer device and that I know you're working with the FDA, but you, you haven't gone down the medical device pathway. If you could just um, maybe tell us a little bit about that decision-making process and what the implications are both for the science of what you're doing and for consumers. So as a scientist, I believe we have to make things that are incredibly well validated whether the FDA looks at you or not. Um, any consumer device I would come to market with, I would have to know myself, has been very well proven to be effective, period. Um, from an FDA perspective, the FDA has actually created a new class of devices called wellness devices. So they look at the Fitbit, devices like ours, et cetera, and they say, okay, these wearables, we're not gonna regulate, we're going to give you your own class, and you can talk about how they aid and support in living with anxiety, or aid and support in living with depression. So from an FDA perspective, we're actually quite in the clear and we're in regular conversations with them to make sure we're in the clear. We went the consumer route because it's actually just so much faster to bring a product to market through consumers. And you have literally 52% of Americans interested in meditation. So we just recently did a study and it said that 52% of Americans either currently meditate or want to meditate because they know it has benefits and they don't know how. So it became really obvious that this was an easy way to go to consumers, give them a solution for something that they, outside of medical sphere, were looking for, and make this process of meditation easy. Okay, well that's fantastic. I didn't realize that that many people were either meditating or interested in meditating. That is really a sea change, I, I had to say we were surprised too. And had we run this survey five years ago, we wouldn't have seen that response. But there's just been such an incredible uptick in meditation and mindfulness. Big CEOs are meditating, athletes meditate. Right now everybody meditates and people are becoming aware that this is something that really benefits your life. Yeah, it's, it's really fantastic. So we're gonna switch from sure. meditation, now that we're all feeling calm, <laughs> and, uh, and we're gonna talk about sleep. And I think just like with meditation, there's been so much interest in, um, in sleep and its impact on our health and well-being. Um, Shelly, tell us a little bit about your company's focus on sleep. Of course, you make beds. Mm -hmm. and, um, and how your technology is helping people to reap the benefits of what science tells us uh, we need to get from good sleep. Great, well, a little bit about our company. First of all, we are a mission-based company. Every employee is dedicated to improving lives by individualizing sleep experiences. And we know everybody is different. And therefore, we believe that every person should have a unique experience with their bed. And their bed should, should adapt to their unique body features as well as your overall routine and lifestyle. Therefore, uh, two years ago, we introduced Sleep IQ technology. Sleep IQ technology takes hundreds of impressions per second of your full body, of your average heart rate, your average breathing rate, of your movement and presence in bed, and gives you a Sleep IQ score every morning. So you can see exactly how you're sleeping and what adjustments you need to make to be able to optimize your sleep experience. And of course, for us, those adjustments start with being able to adjust each side of the bed. So we have dual air chambers in our bed so that you can adjust the firmness and, of course, uh, achieve a higher quality sleep every night. In addition, we have predictive <laughs> analytics that we're just introducing here at CES uh, with our Sleep IQ technology to be able to connect with, uh, with our Sleep IQ API to connect to your other devices and your calendar and understand what's going on in the day and help you get smart about your sleep and provide you insights and suggestions on uh, what you can do and need to do in order to improve your overall sleep. Um, great, so uh, it sounds fantastic. And as I said to Ariel, sounds good, but how do you know or how does the company know that you really are in fact improving the sleep mm -hmm. quality and the amount of sleep 
I guess you also look at that, um, or whatever other sleep parameters there are. How, how, are, how do you know that it works? Great, well, that's a really important question. You know, our company is over 25 years old, and um, it, over 30% of our business is done through repeat and referral. We're, we're a bit fanatical about our sleep experience, and therefore, you know, made the decision a number of years ago to um, dis distribute our products and sell our products through our own store. So we have over 480 sleep number stores here in the United States, and um, that speaks to our credibility and our, our mission-based team you know, with that much of our business being from repeat and referral. In addition, we just completed research uh, for the second time about um, our customers with sleeping with Sleep IQ technology. And over 50% of our customers cite that they have improved sleep with being able to adjust their bed um, with the Sleep IQ technology. And also they, they credit having, you know, just a, a glass is half full uh, perspective in a much more positive outlook, more energy, and they feel better overall, you know, each day that they have a high Sleep IQ score. Um, our Sleep IQ technology was, was born out of medical grade technology. So the company who um, developed the technology uh, was a medical and, and is a medical grade uh, um, product and we moved it into our consumer product. Okay, fantastic. So it sounds like you both have um, an appreciation of the need for doing a systematic evaluation of whether your products yes. work or not, whether they're bringing benefit or not. And I thought I would just ask you, because I had a recent experience where we were uh, interviewing thought leaders about wearables, and the first question mm. I asked them is, so tell me what wearable you use and why you like it. And it turned out 11, I think it was... Uh, 11 out of 12 said they weren't using them. So I'm going to ask you, are you Great. using your own products? And if so, what's yeah. your personal experience with it? Well, I, I'm so glad you asked that question because we're not a wearable. And, you know, that's the beauty of the Sleep IQ technology. All you have to do is get in bed and sleep. There's nothing to turn on. There's, it, the, the technology is embedded inside of the bed. So all of your data is there for you whenever you decide to interact with it. There's nothing to turn on, nothing to wear, nothing to set on your bedside. Um, so it's effortless. And you know, whatever we do, you know, we're focused on meaningful sleep benefits for our customers. We solve problems. And we get to know each of our customers. We understand through our data you know, what's important to them and how do we improve their overall sleep experience. So I'm a no wearable gal. Um, I like things effortless and, and you know, high value from the products that, that I Are you utilize. using a sleep, bed at home, a sleep number bed at home? Oh, of course, I wouldn't <laughs> be without one. Um, the sleep number bed has absolutely changed my life. It, it did when I first started sleeping with it almost eight years ago. And then it's interesting because I've always believed that my sleep IQ or my sleep number setting was a 35. And when I started using the sleep IQ technology, I learned that I actually sleep better at a sleep number setting of 40. So I you know, made my bed a little bit firmer, went up to a sleep number setting of 40, and I moved from sleep IQ scores of in the 60s to sleep IQ scores in the 80s consistently. Whoa. Um, so it just speaks to how important the technology is. Excellent. Ariel? I want one. <laughs> I want to use that one too. Absolutely. That's what I, use I want one too. <laughs> um, I use Muse every day, and it's been beyond extraordinary. So when we first started, I was not a meditator. I was a neuroscientist who knew about the research around meditation. I was somebody who tried to meditate, but always having a million things going in my mind, I could not shut it off. And I'd sit there and try to meditate, and it wouldn't work, and it would be really frustrating. And then by using Muse, I finally said, oh, this is what meditation is. This is what I'm supposed to be doing as an entryway. And it brought open this entire world of meditation, philosophy, history, teachings, et cetera. And very quickly, I noticed, actually, I joined a research study that we did internally. Um, and on my fourth day, I had to write a long format essay. And typically, these take me like three or four hours because as the head of the company, I'm always distracted by everything. You know, everything going on seems like it's an emergency. And this day, I started writing, and I just kept writing. And something would pull my attention. I'd just be like, nope, back to what I'm doing. Nope, back to what I'm doing. Nope, back to what I'm doing, which is the skill that you use to learn with Muse. You learn to identify that your mind is wandering and then very quickly bring it back to the task at hand. And so I got through this thing in 45 minutes and couldn't understand what happened. 
And then I, the next thing I noticed was my addiction to my cell phone just kind of petered away. I used to sort of have this anxiety that would arise, like, <coughs> uh-oh, I'm feeling slightly anxious about something, let me check my phone, like, let me do this distraction task. And I'd feel the little bit of rise of anxiety, and then I'd just be like, nope, I don't care. I was just really able to feel the sensation, and before it magnified, before it got anywhere, just choose to do something else. From a healthcare perspective, I am, you may not be able to tell, five months pregnant. And let me tell you, I have had the easiest five months of anybody I know. I've been on over 40 plane flights, very limited nausea, and life has just felt great. And whenever the emotional anxiety, the like emotional overwhelm of being pregnant comes up and the hormonal stage is bad and you'd start to feel uncomfortable or get into what could have been a fight with somebody, I'm just able to turn away from that and, and kind of move beyond what would have been my base animal sensations to make better choices. No, you, you raise a lot of inter interesting uh, issues in, in your discussion there. First of all, congratulations on your Thank pregnancy you. and having an easy five months. Um, Made the recipe so simple. <laughs> <laughs> There's still four to go. But <laughs> and 18 years after that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, more than 18. <laughs> um, so... Uh, in healthcare, one of the, you know, I know we're talking consumer products, but, but this nexus with healthcare, every healthcare conference I go to, you know, there's two big issues. One is how do you engage patients, right? How do you engage people in what they're supposed to be doing? And then second, how do you do behavior change? Mm -hmm. And um, so you raised, you raised this behavior change issue um, in your discussion about Muse. I mean, it sounds like it has changed your behaviors almost Absolutely. unconsciously. Was that something that was intentionally built in? Is that something you're studying? Um, where, where do you think Muse will go with that? Because it's, it, you know, it is something, it's a nut that everybody's been trying to crack. So behavior change is really embedded inside of our system. So we have a really complex gamification mechanism that gives you rewards and challenges and keeps you motivated to engage. And, you know, over the first few sessions, you're rewarded by just trying to get points. And then very quickly, you recognize that those points are falling away and you're seeing the benefits in your life and you're seeing the reinforcement of the benefit. And it is, to a certain degree, addictive. It's not a word that I like to use in the healthcare context, but it is highly motivating. So there was just an article in the Wall Street Journal with Michael Hsu, the writer, and Dan Harris, and they did a meditation challenge. And so they mused, went head to head together. The first five days were like, oh my God, I'm gonna kill you with these points, I'm gonna kill you with these <laughs> points. And the end of the article is, we now both meditate, see the benefits in our life, and we don't care about our points, and life is better, we've both won. Um, and that's very much embedded in the system. From another kind of motivation perspective, uh, how we implement it is both from a consumer perspective through you know, channels like Best Buy, and then also we have a large network of professionals, psychotherapists, psychiatrists, life coaches, et cetera, who all use Muse inside of their practice. So in the past, when somebody would come to their therapist and their therapist should say, well, you should meditate, they'd go home, it would never happen. Now the therapist gives them a muse and the therapist also becomes the coach for their musing. The therapist can see how effectively they've done each session, they can track their compliance. And then from a healthcare perspective, we're now starting to see doctors and healthcare systems getting on board using it, and this compliance tracking is huge. So you are able to build an extended relationship with the patient and the doctor when they go home. So that's a, that's a really interesting question. I'm going to ask mm -hmm. you that too in, in, in a second, Shelley. But um, it sounds like you have already figured out how to engage providers because one thing we know about uh, a lot of the digital health mm -hmm. tools and the sleep tools, because I read the sleep technology study that was done and presented at the conference that Jill uh, helped to put on at Health 2.0. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, you know, it really... Um, looks like it, it was, um, well, I'm kind of lost my train of thought there, oh, I need to muse, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, uh, it's that need for the sleep number bed. It's the, need for the, <laughs> it's the need for the sleep number bed, right. Well, it'll come back to me, but anyway. So uh, let me move on, and, and when it comes back, I'll ask you again. So, so Shelley, also uh, tell me a, a little bit about, now behavior change, you don't have to really worry about behavior change to get people to use your product, because we're all gonna go to bed. Well, that's right. the beauty. But, you know, I think anything that you make, uh, any product that is radically useful is helping change behavior. And so when, when we design the product and think about the software and the hardware and build that out for the consumer and solve what, what issues consumers have, 
you know, we, we want to build into the product easy, effortless ways to change behavior. And that's why with the Sleep IQ technology and being able to, you know, see exactly how you slept, have the technology make, make suggestions and provide insights about, hey, it looks like you had a long workout, um, you may want to lower your sleep net number setting by five tonight, or, you know, traffic looks really bad in the morning with the weather, you probably need to get up an hour early, so go to bed now. You know, so it really helps you be smart about sleep and knowing that you know, sleep is, is so fundamental to a healthy mind, body, and soul and you know, really feeds into what, what you're talking about. It, it's, it is the baseline and it's that recovery point every single day. That's so sad to think about that today Americans you know, sleep 25% less than 100 years ago. But yet that is the time of recovery for your body and for your mind. And um, it's the time when you, know, you, you, ap you know, absolutely you know, get, get rid of all those, you know, prune all those um, unnecessary thoughts and, and gives you the high focus during the day. Right, yeah, we now understand some of the neuroanatomy of sleep exactly. and how the CSF is able to wash away right. accumulated uh, toxins so it isn't really just, you know, sleep because your mom says it's good to get eight hours. We actually have science behind it That's now. That's right, and so the behavior part's really important to reinforce, you know, all those good, good actions. Right. So I remembered the question, and the question was, it came from what you said about how you've engaged providers. Mm -hmm. and, um, and what we know from this study that they did on sleep is that uh, people said, well, if my doctor told me about it, I'd be more likely to use it. Mm -hmm. So do you guys as a company have a strategy around educating health professionals mm -hmm. about your product and the benefits that it could bring to them, or is that just irrelevant because you're so successful in a pure consumer play? Uh, you know, we do we do see that as very important. Uh, you know, we we think it's an important part of the the consumer's life. Um, I know when I go to my doctor appointments, my doctor always asks me about my sleep, and I say, well, let me show you. So <laughs> I pull out my device, and we look through it, and we talk about it. Um, and, you know, it's terrific to be able to provide that kind of intelligence about what's going on eight hours of every single day. Um, so, you, you know, with the Sleep IQ API that we're introducing here at CES, uh, we're in partnership discussions uh, right now, and our focus is on you know partners that will help contribute to a higher quality of sleep. Uh, so let's talk. Um, that's great. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we're getting closer and closer to this medical thing. So let's talk now a little bit about any interaction that you have, not just with with physicians and clinicians, but health systems. Um, Aaron, I think you mentioned that you you all are partnering with some health systems. Yeah, so we have, it's, I've been on this very interesting path over the last six months talking. I get constantly invited now to healthcare conferences and health systems want to come and learn about meditation. And they come in thinking it's this woo-woo thing and they walk out recognizing, okay, this is mind training to possibly the healthy states. There are all these studies behind it and this works. There's just this amazing study um, that came out of the Partners Healthcare System uh, done by Harvard. They looked at 4,400 people who did a relaxation response course. So it's basically yoga and meditation to engender the relaxation response. After eight sessions, they saw a 43% decrease in costs over the following year. 43% wow. decrease in healthcare utilization. That is astonishing. So now all of a sudden you have healthcare systems perking up their ears saying, well, this is an extraordinary way to be able to optimize our system. How do we get on board this? And then Nobody ever actually knows how you implement meditation because you can send somebody to a room with a teacher that now takes up space in a hospital that nobody ever comes to, or you can just hand them a device. So we're starting to see people come on board and say, how do we save money with this? And then we're starting to see insurers come to us. And we have our first, um, one of our first studies going with insurers demonstrating that in expensive conditions, implementing this tool can save you money. Do you see um, any time in the future where some version of Muse might become a prescription product that's actually reimbursed, say, by Medicare or yes. by other health insurers? Yeah, so right now it, it tends to fall into two categories. So if you're somebody without a pre-existing condition, it just falls into your wellness category, and so you have wellness dollars that you can spend against you know, the set of devices. Mm -hmm. If you're somebody who has you know, COPD or diabetes or an expensive condition, they're no, now looking at actually giving you Muse proactively 
um, without you having to pay for it being something that is just part of your... So the health system would buy it? Yep, the health system. So they, they become your too. customer. Yeah. Um, how about with sleep number? This is, that, that's a really interesting concept because you're significantly more expensive than, uh, than a muse, so the, this would get the health insurer's attention. Um, any thoughts about whether for certain people who have serious sleep conditions, you might mm -hmm. become a prescription product? Well, you know, our focus is on and ensuring that, that customers from, you know, all aspects, consumers of all aspects of their life have access to our bed. Um, it's part of why we're here at CES introducing, you know, the, the IP bed for a thousand, around a thousand dollars with all of this technology is just by broadening and making things more accessible. Uh, we see the lines blurring between, you know, healthcare and, and consumer products overall and uh, this is an area where you know, technology today is the go-to for self-improvement. So by solving problems and providing a level of technology where individuals have and, and that knowledge of exactly how they're sleeping and what they can do to improve their sleep and have those conversations with their, their doctors and be empowered to um, be in control of their life, you know, there is a lot of synergy between how the healthcare system's evolving and consumer products are evolving, and I'll just leave it at that. For but now. great, I think our time is wrapped up. We're giving the, okay. uh, the Jill signal. The Jill, the Jill. Uh, the Jill cloak. hook. Great. And, uh, like sorry, I actually couldn't see the clock for That's okay, I'm sorry. It's a problem. But I want to thank you both. The work you're doing is really interesting, thank and you. I love this idea of the nexus between you know, consumer-oriented products that are now bringing so much value in the healthcare space. So thank you very we much. Thank, thank you. you.